we're off, we're recording. So welcome everybody to uh, session three, I think this is, of Navigating Uncertainty. Uh, before we go any further, uh, I would like to just acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land um, on which our participants are, are situated and also where you might be when you're watching this video um, and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. So what we're doing with this, this series of, of workshops is um, providing a range of different skills and techniques to help people navigate uh, a pretty uncertain and pretty uh, unstable, unknown kind of territory right that we're all in right now. Um, so it's all very applied. Uh, as much as there is theory that sits behind these techniques, um, what we're really hoping is that people give them uh, a crack who actually try it and um, it's an experiential uh, exercise as opposed to a cognitive one. Um, and as this is this is part number three, and it is standalone, you can watch this and still get value and, and be involved in this and still get value from it. But what we would really love you to do as well is watch session one and session two because they provide a bit more of a foundation to the work, uh, and that will all be available on YouTube as well. Um, is that are you happy with that intro, Patrick? That sounds absolutely fine. Thank you. Cool. No. So. Um, I'm going to hand over to Patrick now, who will take us through our our paces. Um, and yeah, I hope you I hope you get a lot out of it. We'll see we'll see where where we end up with it. Thank you. Uh, well, welcome. Um, a little bit of a blusty grey afternoon this time, so uh, quite a good time to be inside, really. Um, just very very quickly, the recap on the past couple of sessions has been on applied improvisation uh, and just looking at putting a language around the skills that we use for improvising um, uh, from a theatrical point of view, uh, from where my training has come from, now into the corporate uh, and leadership and communication skills, which is where this fits in. So. Uh, that's what the, the, the past couple of sessions have been. Uh, we start each session with a little, just a little fun exercise that you can do in, in your own space. Um, that is a balancing between our left brain and our right brain. Brain gym, it's called. Gymnastics for the brain. Uh, it's the old school version was this sort of thing. Um, but it's, it's all become a lot more sort of... Um, the technical and, and a bit of fun. So uh, it's just a little exercise for us to connect as a group and to uh, get yourself in your headspace. So uh, with your left hand, uh, each one's a different one. So there are a whole lot of different exercises. So uh, this time we're gonna do with our left hand, uh, the peace sign, uh, and with our right hand, an A-OK -okay sign. And what you do is you swap the A-OK -okay for the peace sign and the peace sign for the A-OK. -okay. <laughs> Uh, and then you do it at the same time and you just try to swap back at exact yeah. Oh. <laughs> and it just breaks that <laughs> it just breaks that headspace. And the two very, very simple motor skill exercises that we have. And Jeremy's just realized he doesn't have the ability to do that. <laughs> you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not very good. <laughs> it's not about being good, Josie. It's about just Giving it a shot. I never used to. It's a skill you can learn. But it's actually it's kind of helpful like, watching uh, what you're doing rather than, yeah. It, <laughs> it is definitely a skill I haven't yet acquired. Yeah, but these are just simple little things, a, a brain gym stuff that we can do to get our head space into a, a, a more focused point, uh, which is the, is the theme for today's sort of session. Uh, is presence and connection. And uh, it's, again, the supply and improvisation, skills that we use. Um, we're, we're in a situation now with this whole COVID-19, this whole new world where now we are having to communicate through the screen. Um, and we become very conscious of the situation that we're in. Uh, maybe we're having slight computer issues. Uh, we, we become conscious of the technology. We become conscious of the screen in front of us. I don't know what view you have. Um, I have gallery view, but I take my own photo out because otherwise I end up just looking at myself and not you lovely people. Um, and we are, we are um, influenced and conscious of the surroundings of our room. 
um, and our backdrops and everything. So it, it's an interesting world now, and it's very difficult to be fully connected with the people on the other side of the screen if we have this sense of consciousness about the space around us. Um, so this session is about skills that we can use, skills that we can do in pairs to get um, present and connected through the screen. Uh, and the first one is a very just a simple exercise where you will embrace the space that you're in, um, but I will get you to do it in pairs. What, what you will be doing is just pointing to objects that are in front of you, um, in the room around you. Uh, I'll demonstrate very quickly, you just point to an object, look at it and name it. That is a sun hat, there's a lamp, there's a printer, there is a rubber, a cutting knife a bookcase, headphone speakers. So I'm pointing to the object and I'm seeing what the object is and I'm basically just naming what that object is. It's that simple, yeah? And this will help us uh, in the skills of observation and being present and connecting to the space around us. So uh, that, anyone got any questions about the exercise at this point? No, easy. So we'll get into groups of two <laughs> pairs. I might not be able to put uh, Jenny in a group if she can't speak. Okay, we'll see. Well, uh, of course she can't speak. Sorry, Jenny. Okay. I'm all good. I will just watch. Excellent. <laughs> you can Wait. still do the exercise at home, Jenny. You don't have to do it in a group. You can still do the exercise in your own space. Okay. How long, Patrick? Um, I'd say uh, probably about a, a minute, 30 seconds each. Okay. So one person does it and then the other person does it. And so the other one's just observing. Okay. Cool. You're going into a room. See you all. all right. Join breakout room. Um, we might need a, maybe a minute and a half. I think we were a bit short. <laughs> Did you want another quick minute? No, no, we're good. I think, did everybody both get a go in your groups? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So it's very important when we're doing this exercise is not to go, there's a, or I can see a, it's just name the object, move on. Phone, pen, book, speaker rather than there's a guitar pick, I can see a roll of tape. So we're not using any words to fill out the space to give us time to think. We just want to name the object for what it is. Yeah, cool. So uh, we'll go back in and do it again. And uh, this okay. time, it doesn't matter if you repeat um, the, same ex uh, the same objects, but there's plenty around. Just name the object, just name the object and get as fast as you possibly can. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you've got two minutes because I can't do 90 seconds, but there you go. Okay, that, that's fine. That's good. Welcome back, Jane. Um, very good. So how was that? I mean, it's a very simple exercise. It's nothing, um, it's nothing earth shattering, uh, except I know now that Jeremy has a zebra in his lounge, but um, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. So it's a very simple exercise. It's just us connecting with the space that we have around us. But what I want to do now is just trick our brain a little bit. Uh, this time, when you point to an object, you have to name it anything other than what is in the room, anything other than what it is and anything other than what's in the room. So I can't point to my cell phone and call it a chess piece because I have a chess piece up there on the top of the bookshelf. I can't, put, I can't point to my pen and call it a roll of deodorant because there's one over on the other side of the room. Um, so it would sound something like, uh, that's a tractor, that's a chimpanzee, 
That's a, a half-eaten avocado, uh, children's... Soup. What? You don't have a half-eaten avocado in your house? <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> Doesn't everybody have... Uh, no, it's all avocado or nothing with me. Um, <laughs> so, um, every time you point to an object, you have to call it anything other than what it is. Yeah? Got that? Got that. Give that a shot. Yeah. All right. Right, great. So, uh, how was that? Was that easy? Was it hard? Was it what? I found it hard. You found it hard, Gene? Yeah, why? Uh, um, I don't know, just having to think of something that um, that it wasn't that I was looking at. Um, yep, cool. Yeah, it was, was tricky to pluck something from my brain, um, even though my brain is full of stuff, just when it's put on the spot like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Josie? Yeah, the same. I really struggled to... Um, I think the thing was that I already had the object in my brain, but then I wanted to use the words for other objects in the room. Yeah. Um, and then I just struggled to find any kind of external input once I was in the room. Yeah. Nice, nice. Good, good observations. Uh, Jeremy? Uh, I enjoyed that. Um, so I missed sessions one and two, but I think we're kind of doing improv and I like improv. So um, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fun. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you, you had a good sense of variety in the objects you're looking at. So generally, however, however, <laughs> um, what, what um, your partner that, that you were working with may have done one of three things, or maybe all three things. Uh, the three common things that happened during this, and this is what you were doing a lot of, Jeremy, uh, and this is just an observation, not a criticism, is that's a... Um, concrete mixer that's a uh, toaster yeah so we what we do is we fill that space with a verbal noise generally um or ah uh, while it gives our brain time to think yeah so hands up if you were doing that yep at times yeah Definitely. um yeah uh, i assume you got your hand up gene yes yep <laughs> another thing that we tend to do is We'll go, oh, that's a tree, that's a bush, that's a shrub. That's a car, that's a truck, that's a tractor. That's a pen, a pencil, a biro. And we get into listing objects because our brain is going, oh, I just have to think of different things. So I'll get into a category and I'll just list them. Yeah? That's, an, that's, another, that's another thing that we tend to do. Um, and the third thing that we tend to do is... Uh, we'll remember what the last person said and we'll just apologize for repeating what they said, you know. Uh, so these are the three things that we tend to do. And the idea of the object uh, the, of this is to really look at the object, see the object and, and then let your brain connect the dots. So I'm looking at a lamp at the moment. It's a chrome lamp uh, um, and it's got a, um, it's, uh, it's got a um, thing on it. So I, I would go UFO. So I've associated what I've seen with something like that. So I'm going UFO. I'm looking now at my cell phone. I'm going a slice of bread. Yeah. So I'm seeing shapes and I'm making an association. But I'm not going, that's a, um, oh, looks like a UFO. Oh, it's a UFO. I'm just going to pause. Even if it takes me a little longer to say it, I'll wait. And then I'll say pot plant, eggshell, yeah? So just pause, say the object, no sounds in between. If you find yourself listing, the person that you're um, doing it through the screen, tell them just say you're listing and, and so you can change it. Does that all make sense to you? Any questions? Could I, would it be okay for me to make a few comments? Absolutely, no. Um, and I think that idea of, uh, of listing things and also, um, I'm doing it now, the ums and the ahs, uh, like, but the idea of listing is a really linear way of thinking and, and what we're trying to do with this activity is get out of that linear way of thinking and get out of this idea of association. 
because it's really difficult to be kind of innovative and creative when all you're doing is moving a tiny step away from what you already have. Um, so it's how do you start to see things? How do you start to see a really familiar territory, whether it's your house, well, I'm assuming everyone's in their, in their house at the moment, or your workplace or the way that you approach your work and how you do your work. It's really difficult to see the same territory with fresh eyes and with new eyes because at the moment that's what we're, asked, we're, we're being asked to do is to reimagine what our work looks like and reimagine the way that we're engaging and behaving with each other. So um, this idea of, you know, of listing just speaks to me volumes about the, the way our, our minds work in that linear way. So it's how do we step outside of that? Um, and the idea also of being super present to what we actually have around us. So again, it's this idea of fresh eyes to familiar territory. So we might see things that we do in our practice. We might see things in our house. We might see things at our workplace or in, a, in the way that we engage the skills, the techniques we use. It doesn't have to be an object per se. It can be, you know, a conceptual object. Um, is how do we how do we actually get present with that? Because the things that we see all the time, we get super familiar with. So we don't really see them anymore. We just know that they're there. So this is again a way of really identifying something uh, with more depth, and with real intention, with a deliberate intention. Um, so that's how I, I see this as being a really useful exercise. To Absolutely. And if we do the things the same every time, uh, mm -hmm. then we never do move very far. In advance whereas if we look at things with fresh eyes um, we can now and we have to due to the, the the way we operate nowadays we need to look at things with different eyes we need to look at things in different ways so we need to start thinking outside the box and exercising our brains into coming up with new ideas for yeah rather than just repeating what we've already got in front of us it's absolutely like and it's the creative people in co-creation with our colleagues if if one of us or two of us or all of us are thinking outside that box, what a magical space that would be. We just lost Josie, yeah. I think. Oh, she is. Well, she's back. Technical difficulty, she's frozen. <laughs> and she's back. So yeah, give it another go. See how fast you can get at it this time. Okay. All right. So, did it get any? Uh, did it get any easier? At the start, but then I sort of stalled and I lost my momentum. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you went into your head because you started probably thinking about mm. how well you were doing. Yeah. Or you know, like what? What? Yeah. Yeah. It became less about. Um. I guess. Yeah. Off the bat. Um. Sort of. Oh, I can't even think of the word now. Um. You ran out of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> It was, more, it was more you were thinking as opposed to just being and responding and, and running on kind of instinct almost. Yeah, yeah, or intuition, yeah. 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 So, again, these are just, these are skills that we, it's a, it's a skill, and all skills get better the more you practice it, you know, and um, I find myself, if I've got anything that I need to do that has a little bit of uh, importance to it, I will do, and I need to be present, I can do a series of these sort of exercises, and I will do this naming object um, exercise in my car before I go into a meeting. Back in the old days when we used to go to meetings <laughs> by our, our When we car. actually left our house. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I, think, uh, I think that's really a good point, Patrick, because it's, it's, even though this is a useful exercise to, uh, to create new ideas, but it's also that really, a really great exercise to be present, to actually be deliberate and conscious in what we're seeing and what we're experiencing and, and what we're witnessing as opposed to just go questions. Mm. being in our head, you know, I think, and Jean, your point is, is so astute. The moment that you end up in your head, it limits your capacity to be creative. It, the more that you think about something, the less you're able to actually conceptualize. So, yep. uh, yeah, you can't. Yeah, well, the, the more we think about things, we go into our head. Correct. And then we, we cut off and go, oh, I don't, I'm listening to that little voice. And if right now you're thinking, I don't have a little voice in my head, that's the little voice I'm talking about. <laughs> um, 
So it's a very special day because it's um, it's everybody's birthday today, uh, and uh, we're going to you're going to give maybe we'll go into different rooms just for fun. Um, yeah. oh, uh, I don't know if I can. I'll try to. I'll try to swap you around. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if not. I just um, for a moment. Somebody, you're going to give somebody a birthday present. Uh, you, the person in the screen to you. Uh, for Jean, you will have to. Ex you'll have to. Um, uh, just be a little descriptive on how you're passing the present. <laughs> Okay, so I missed, I, I dropped out for a minute there, so I missed what was said before giving someone oh, a present. Yeah, it's every, it's everybody's birthday, so we're going to give everybody a birthday present. So okay. um, it's basically what I'll do, for say, for Naomi, is I'll go, happy birthday, Naomi, and I'll give her some form of shape. Um, I'll create the size and the weight of it. Here, Jean, you could say, here's a large, heavy thing or a small, light gift. Yep. But I won't specific um, specify the shape. Going, oh yep. look, here's a, here's a round ball thing. I won't. I'll just go. Here's here's a here's a birthday present. Happy birthday, Naomi. And Amazing. Naomi goes, oh, it's a it's a puppy. It's a, <laughs> hey. And then I'll go. Yes. And then she'll hand me something and go, Happy birthday. Yep. Ah, oh, thank you. It's a, a, a gold chain. Yeah, and then I give her a present back. So we just, for a minute, one minute, um, just swapping birthday presents. Yep. And happy birthday, everyone. Yay! Don't give me an Easter egg, anybody. I've had enough of those. <laughs> All right. So uh, just a very simple question. Just raise your hand if you got a shit present. Who got a bad present? A what? Bad present. No, it was good. You got all your presents were good? <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. Yeah, really quick, there wasn't enough time for me to give Josie one, so. Oh, happy birthday, Josie. I bought you this present. Thank you. Um... And now you name it. <laughs> um... Always wanted a kitten. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, Jeremy's got a present for you as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Josie, this is for you. Thank you. Um, this is such a beautiful ripe peach. I've always wanted someone to give me a peach for my birthday. <laughs> so cool. Right. So if you got a bad present, like, or you just got something normal or something plain. Jeremy got a handkerchief full of snot. Oh. But I didn't give it to him. Who gave you that present, Jeremy? You did. You named it. So if you've got a boring present or a, a present you didn't like or something that wasn't very inspiring, you gave it to yourself because you're the one that named it. All we did was give you a shape. Yeah? So it's interesting how our brain will, when we are having to create something, when we're having to be um, connected with someone, we don't always go to the best possible thing, yeah? So we will downplay it. Snotty handkerchief, uh, Alvis and covered velvet pillowcase, although that's not too bad really if you're into kids. Um, so this time to counter out that, when you get the present, you go, thanks, this is what I've always wanted. And then you name the object. Everyone must start the exercise with, thanks, it's what I've always wanted. And then name it. All right? Maybe, uh, Josie, you start first with Jean this time. Yeah. Yeah. And just a minute. Um, yeah, yeah, just a couple of presents. Or, yeah, a minute. Let's do a minute. Okay. Awesome, awesome presents this time. What did you get this time? Jean, what did you get? Uh, I got Never Ending Avo and Feta Smash. <laughs> I might have been inspired by Josie who got Never Ending Chocolate. So. Ah, that's perfect. <laughs> it's not as if you guys haven't eaten enough. I don't know about you, but I'm always eating. 
We got we got water of eternal youth. We got unicorn, oh. unicorn hair, oh. peace and love for the world. Oh, cool. Peace and love, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's so cool. Love so it. It's, it's interesting just by phrasing alone, just by the, the sheer sentence of saying, thanks, this is what I've always wanted. You all of a sudden create much better things from nothing. Yeah, we're already just, we're already giving a, 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 a more grandiose and joyful extension. And it, the, the interchange was a lot more fun. Yeah. Mm, interesting. And I think, I'm not sure if, if the people who are attending today, Josie, I think you might've been there with the yes, but and the yes and exercise. So, um, yeah, I was for the first session I was. Yeah. 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 So that idea of, uh, you know, accepting a gift. Uh, and, I, and again, I, I keep thinking, I'm trying to apply this into a, a kind of a work context where accepting an idea or accepting a suggestion or accepting an, a, you know, an offer from someone, um, that if you're kind of blocking it before you've even really looked at it or explored it, it's not helpful. You know, if you're able to accept it in a really open, uh, 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 creative kind of way, it, it just brings more weight, more value to it. it, gives it more possibility as opposed to just shutting it down. It doesn't mean that you go with that. It doesn't mean that you go with that idea, but it just means that it's received and um, uh, received and considered in a, in a much more positive way. Absolutely. Absolutely. How often yeah. do we say when somebody makes a suggestion or has an idea, you go, oh, uh, just simple little things like a little sound that goes, oh, or that, nah, that'll never work. We well, you don't even try it. How do we know? Just by okay. adding positive, a positive attitude towards everything in that languaging, we get a much nicer connection. Like I have a much nicer connection now with Jeremy, even though we've only just met, because we've shared a sense of laughter, a sense of joy, we've, we've shared and accepted each other's ideas with a positive and um, uh, 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 present connection, mm. which is a much nicer way of connecting with everyone. Yeah. And you get some great presents. And some good presents, yeah. Some great presents. Yay. Um, so time time wise, that's kind of a, a quick sort of run through of, of today's session, which is presence and connection. Um, and then on Thursday, which is the next one, we're looking at uh, listening and actively listening. And I know uh, that's a skill that you guys have, but we might have just a whole different um, view on it this time. Too. So yeah, thanks for playing. Yay. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. And we'll be popping, as I said, all these recordings will be up on our YouTube channel. So um, please subscribe, please watch the first couple. And if you're not able to make it to future ones, then, you know, get, get on board and watch them as well. Uh, and keep us posted on how you go. It'd be really great to hear if you're applying some of this and how it's working. What time is it on Thursday, same time? I think it's one o'clock on Thursday. Thursday is one o'clock, yeah. And yeah. Naomi, can you send me the link or just remind me how I can, could you email that to me? I can't remember where I saw it or in a hundred places, but. Sure, no worries. Thanks, Thank you. please. And Eugene, no worries. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Pleased to meet you, Patrick. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.